Good afternoon, one and all. And welcome to season two of Futsal 868 Corner Talks. My name is Geoff Edwards, series moderator and president of the Futsal A global sporting professionals share their perspectives on the fastest growing in no sport in the world. Our main objective is to sensitize and educate sports stakeholders on the sport of futsal and other pressing local and global issues. The COVID-19 pandemic has triggered many social issues, amongst them intimate partner violence and family violence deeply rooted in gender norms. According to Trinidad and Tobago Express report on 30 23rd of April 2020, there has been 203 police reports made for March compared with 42 reports for the same month in 2019. That's interesting, noting that 232 reported cases of assault occurred in 2019, almost tripled that, that reported in 2020. On April 23, 2020, 146 countries, including Trinidad and Tobago, answered the UN General Secretary's call on gender-based violence and COVID-19 and committed to taking prevention and redress of gender-based violence, a key part of our national and global response, as well as ensuring that issues of gender equality are treated as essential to recovery. Hmm. As we ended in 2020, sadly, this is so we begin in 2021. Today, in episode 38, the first of Futsal ACC Corner Talks for 2021. We discuss toxic masculinity and gender-based violence, part two. With us, join us, the same panel that we had before, and we wait them to join us soon, would be Dr. Tracy Rogers, lecturer in the Department of Sociology, Psychology, and Social Work at the University of Western East Mona Campus. Mr. Sile Joseph, psychologist, Before we continue, let us take Andrea Bart, Ashanti Riley, Suzette Sylvester, T. Battered to Death, and again in January, a nurse whose name we can't call because she's still she's a survivor was attacked with a hammer. It is heart wrenching to say the least as regards what's happening. And as I wait for my guests to come in, noting that you know technology plays a, a, an integral role, I want us to take a moment to understand what's happening. I wear, yes, this is our new jersey, but it's also symbolic in terms of black, noting what's happening, what's going on in our beloved country and also the world. With that being said, I want to take time to to really acknowledge the fact that Futsal 868 is going to really put our best foot forward to deal with this matter. And we have teamed up with the Trinity Bay Coalition Against Domestic Violence as our tagline says, stronger together, to be able to deal with, assist as best as we can, this conversation. And for those who don't know who the Trent Bigger Coalition Against Domestic Violence is, they are a non-profit organization with charitable status. CADV is made up of organizations and individuals 
involved in providing support services for persons affected by domestic violence. These services include counseling, legal advice, and referrals for protection. They are committed for advocating for responses and policies that protect against and prevent all forms of domestic violence. Please, people, please, if you can, we ask you all to partner with them. But as you see in our graphic, Challenge 1, and when we talk about Challenge 1, it's, it's based on something we'll speak more to. But let's jump straight into it, because with us, we have Dr. Tracy Rogers. Good day, Doc. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. You look, you look regal, I must say. Let me take a moment to recognize, you know, as we're supposed to do. You look regal. You look, you look ex, ex, exquisite. Oh, Good afternoon to you, Doc. Good afternoon. Um, we have as well Mr. Sule Joseph. Mr. Joseph, are you there, sir? Yeah, I just um trying to organize my mic and stuff here, but I'm here. I'm here. Good afternoon. Not a problem. And we, last but not least, we have Dr. Niles, but I see he's having a little bit of technical difficulties. Dr. Niles, are you here or not, sir? I don't think he is. But while Dr. Niles is, is sorting himself out, um, what I will do, I will take a moment, I will take a quick moment to, to recap. Let's take a quick moment to recap the discussion that we had. Dr. Rogers, you started off by saying that gender-based violence is power, control, and gender inequality is deep and wide. You, you, you use the word mammoth, which can't be solved overnight. You also mentioned that we have to attack it at all fronts. We, have, we need to model equality. We need to understand it's everybody's business. We need to enforce educational education, and we need to deal with drama. We need to deal with trauma. Sorry, with trauma also being one of the recommendations that Mr. Joseph mentioned. You also mentioned, we also said that men and masculinity are not the enemies, but patriarchy and toxic masculinity are. You mentioned, which I have taken, I have taken hold of, take, have responsible conversations with and amongst men. Lastly, you stated the power of the collective. Mr. Joseph, in his recommendation, stated the following, that values and nationalistic pride should be mandatory subjects for which Dr. Niles mentioned that it's already there as part of our educational syllabus. You also spent mentioned, Mr. Joseph, treating traumas that exist in our society. And lastly, teach our boys to be masculine in a new world. Dr. Niles, his point of views were as follows. Psycho-ed for the nation, family system therapy, revisitation of value systems at home level, and inclusivity in the process of change. So those are some of the recommendations and a summary of what happened in part one. But Dr. Rogers, Dr. Rogers, Andrea Barrett, Let's start, Dr. Rogers. Let's start. Let's start. Let's let's continue this this conversation. Talk to me. Well, you know, let's just kind of first stop and just have a moment to um, to understand that the nation. I think the nation is grieving. It is a very painful time um, for all of us. When I was coming to do this 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 program today, which has been planned for a long time, I think. You reached out to us about doing this program almost immediately after the last, the first one, which was in December. Um, I, I, my feelings about this program coming right after, or in the midst of us dealing with this tragedy, um, is that I don't want us to fall into, you know, there's a way in which we're very reactive when these things happen. Um, and I, I, I was wary of us falling into that, you know, reacting to, to a manifestation of a larger problem. Yeah, this, this problem has manifested this week, but it is ongoing on all of the time. And I, I, I want us not to get caught up in the hype of this moment. 
Um, we are mourning the loss of, of a life. Um, we, we're, we're dealing with that. Her family is dealing with that in ways that we cannot begin to comprehend. And we want to hold space and, and, and honor that. But let's understand that what we are seeing in the headlines this week, this national conversation that's going on, um, this is a symptom of something much deeper. And, and the roots of it lies in what we were talking about last week. We need to understand that gender-based violence has its roots in inequalities. It has its roots in norms and values around womanhood. Um, the, the sense that women's bodies, are in, that, that, that men are entitled to women's bodies. It has its roots in those things. Um, and we will continue to have these manifestations um, of this deep-seated problem, um, which has to do with inequality, which has to do with norms and values around women's bodies and, and ownership of women's bodies. And, it, and the fact that, that, that it is acceptable um, that, that this could even happen and that it continues to happen. So it's a very sad time, um, a very, very troubling and very sad time. But what I want us to do is not get into, um, not, get, not get hijacked by this, but understand that this is something deeper and let's deal with some of the roots of this issue, yeah? So I'm not hearing you, Godfrey. I think your mic may be muted. In your pain. I'm hearing your pain, Doc. Yeah. And and that is that is that is heart wrenching, to say the least. Yeah. Because on one hand you're saying, on one hand you're saying, let's not get caught up in the hype. But as a as a woman on this screen right now, you are flanked by two men, virtually, two men who are supposed to be able to protect you, which is something Mr. Joseph said in the beginning. One of his one of his last statements, I should say, in the first part, and yet your voice trembles. A woman of confidence, a woman of strong, of stature, your voice trembles as you remember the life of Miss Bart. Yeah. Talk to me as a talk to me as a mother. Talk to me as a friend. How do you feel? How do you truly feel? I mean, I I am I am devastated, and but I I also think it's a devastation that I feel I feel constantly. Like I think I said this at at the last time. What I go through on a daily basis to feel safe um, is oftentimes outside of the experience and to some extent the understanding of the average man. Now, I want to I want to really be clear because I said in the last episode and I'm repeating here, men are not the enemies and I'm not painting all men with a broad stroke. But the fact of the matter is that there are things that I go through in every day. And I, I parent, I have a 10 year old daughter as well. So there are ways in which I experience a lack of safety on a daily basis um, that I think is without, outside the realm of understanding of men. Um, and not because you don't care, but because you living in this body and inhabiting this body is an experience that is outside of your realm of experience. As is, I also am outside the realm of experience of inhabiting a man's body as well. Um, so there is pain, there is fear, um, there is 
there's pain, there's pain. And, 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 and again, I cannot even begin to imagine what that family is going through now and then having to also go through and grieve so publicly as well. Um, I cannot begin to imagine. So, so in a way, it's, it's not new in that I live with that every day. Yeah, when I leave my home, what I think about, I think about the possibility of being violated on a daily basis. Um, and I know you mentioned protection, but I also, I, I think it's, it's, it's more than protection because protection has this also, also has this, um, you know, patriarchal undertone, like men need to protect women. Men need to respect women, yeah? It's not about protecting. I, I, I don't need protection, per se. You know, there are people in my space, there are people that I love and care about that I protect, that protect me, but I don't need every man to come out to protect me. What I would like is for a man to respect me, not because I'm his mother, his sister, his nanan, his nephew, or I look like a woman he could trap, but because I am a human being and this is my body, I walk in it, respect it, yeah? So when, when we use the word protection, I feel a little bit uneasy about that as well. Yeah, because it does not replace the fundamental right to respect. Mr. Joseph, good afternoon, sir. And, and a virtual Happy New Year. I mean, I would have said it to you before, but a virtual Happy New Year to you. Um, it's, you, know, you know, it's very interesting that first show i i didn't I, I mean yes we were going to continue but everything happens for a reason god is so good eh? god is so good that you can you all imagine that our very first show for 2021 a continuation of 2020 is actually a show that the nation is supposed to see sadly sadly guys but dr joseph talk to me Hello? You, hello? Are you hearing me? Oh, sorry. I was, yeah, I wasn't hearing you for a second. Sorry. Uh -huh. That's okay. No, I was saying, I, I was I saying to you that... Virtual, virtual, I heard that virtual out. Yes, I was saying to you that it's very interesting that, I heard that we start off 2021. We start off 2021 as we end 2020, but in a very... In a, in a, in, I was... Australia, you're not hearing him either. Yeah, I'm not hearing him. He cut yeah. off. I don't know what's going on. He's frozen, so it's 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 likely not you. <laughs> well, I, I was really, I was wondering, I was wondering, I was wondering if it was on my end. All right. You can you can go ahead and talk. Too. I feel so. Well, yeah, he'll right. jump back here. Let's hear. Let's hear your comment. All right. So I wanna, I want to, I want to. I actually don't want to repeat, but I want to. I would like to um, reinforce, um, Tracy, what you would have said. A, a couple of things. Um, firstly, I had a little bit of apprehension about us having this conversation in the current space and the dynamic. Because I feel as though when persons are heavily emotional, it is a difficult time to receive information. And mm -hmm. any information shared at all, I, I feel as though some party may feel easily offended because it is a time of emotions and so on, wave, um, a wave of emotions. So I'm seeing men jumping up and saying, um, you know, men are attacked too. And, blah, 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 and, and you have people calling, what about our men? Blah, 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 blah. blah. And, and then people saying, you know, now is not the time for men, it's women. And, and so what I can acknowledge is the same thing that you have said that we are in a we are a nation in pain right now. And I just want to acknowledge that, that we're in pain. And when you are in this level of pain, this it, it is so surfaced that it is difficult to have these type of conversations during a period of pain like that. So I know we cannot remove ourselves from that. We, we can't remove the situation from this discussion. 
And so we must be mindful of that while we are having this conversation. But as you rightfully said, this conversation, no offense to anybody, goes beyond this situation. This situation is a symptom, a symptomology of a greater issue that we have been discussing since, since before now. And I understand that people are, are understandably upset and hurt and angry. Um, what I find interesting is that um, women are hurting. A lot of women are crying out and talking about this is their daily experience. And men have um, done what men do. They have been angry. So men angry. So men on social media angry and women on social media expressing their hurt and pain and empathy while men out there expressing their anger. Um, so I really, I really don't want this. I want this conversation to, to while we're having it, we need to, while we do understand that it is in a time of, of and a space where this is occurring, we need to kind of take it above just that incident. Because as we looked at it for the last iteration, when we all met, uh, these are systematic, sy systemic, sorry, systemic issues that kind of go back far family and culture and all of these sorts of things that we that, that we need to address now i'll take this time to make a controversial statement by uh, and ask that you all out there forgive me or not i guess but this when when i spoke uh, there was a period when i spoke and i said that in my personal or humble belief that Trinidad did not, Trinidad and Tobago did not have a rape culture, a, a presiding rape culture. We had a hypersexualized culture, a culture of misogyny, and a culture of, um, a, a, a culture, a, a, we still had glass ceilings that existed for women. And we needed to address that. And to blanket it in the concept of, of a rape culture, um, I disagreed. And I disagreed because I felt when atrocious incidents happen to women in Trinidad, there is generally an outcry. My issue is, though, that we are a reactive society. So that we react to these heinous incidents happening. But we don't address the, the root causes of these incidents. So we're not going back to the traumas. We're not addressing that. We're not addressing the cultural issues. We're not addressing that. But what we want is that we want uh, redress. We want to be able to deal with the issue. We want the perpetrator hung. We want all these various things. And we want this mob, this seven-day mob mentality. And so conversations like these are very important because we have to stay fixed on what the issues are. We have to look at what, what needs to be addressed, the, the systemic issues that have to be addressed. And I echo what, what Dr. Rogers is saying. If you know how much it angers me to hear people talking about saving our women, and I know that it comes from a good place, right? And I know it does, but it, it angers me. It's a, it's a peeve of mine. Because I am saying, the people who are calling for us to save the... Who are we saving our women from? It's from us. So when you talk about save, we save, save, save your woman from who? From you. So, and even if you are not the person who is beating a woman, who is who is who feels that a woman is a property, every time you turn your nose or you turn your face or you ignore a situation where you know a woman is being abused, you are contributing to that in the society. Every time you make a, a snide comment or something that that make demean women and bring women down to the to the level of chattel or property, you are contributing to that. So when we talk about saving our women, whom are we saving our women from? Not to mention uh, this concept that men now need to save, save, save our women. No, Pali. I would like to suggest men need to start saving men. Fix all yourself. We need to start looking at the issues that we have. Women are not out there beating, raping, uh, um, molesting women. The perpetrators mm -hmm. are predominantly men. So the issue is not, is not a woman issue. The issue is a man issue. We need to address these issues with the men and the boys in our society. 
not talking about giving pepper spray to women and giving them a gun and thing because from the time we enter a conversation where a woman needs to arm herself to walk the street or go to work or send her child to school, we as a society, somewhere a system has failed. We have failed as a society. It shouldn't even have to come to that. When we enter a con when we start to enter a conversation where we start debating, well, something happened to her, what she was wearing, we have failed as a society. And this is not a conversation. Because the conversation, when we talk about um protect our women, when we talk about save our women, when we talk about, we put in the responsibility back on women. And I I would love to first to start a movement moving away from talking about saving our women to educating our men. It is about teaching men to respect women. And, and again, I want to agree with Dr. Rogers on that point. Respect. And you're not respecting her for being a woman. You're respecting her for being a person. That level of respect, that is the conversation we need to start to have. And, 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 and I don't want to consume all of your time, so I will turn it back over. I'll turn it back over to you. God. Dr. Dr. Niles, um, I'm bringing you in conversation. One of the, your recommendations you had in 2020, three days before Christmas, was psycho ed for the nation. Before you jump in to speak to that in relation to the, the trauma, the trauma that we experience with the death of this young lady, I want I want to speak to myself here because something that uh, Dr. Rogers would have said is something that Mr. Jesus would have said before. And even a simple thing as in a WhatsApp group amongst a WhatsApp group amongst men. I, I, I went to a quote-unquote prestigious male school in Trinidad and Tobago and we share, we share pictures. We share pictures of women. And I know a lot of persons, this is going to go, this is going to, this is on, this is live, this is on the internet. And a lot of persons might say, but uh, they, might, they might start to behave like if this is not, this is something new. This is not new. The interesting thing about it is how many of us men actually say this is wrong. Stop it. And as simple as that is, I sit here and I say, lesson learned it needs to stop we need to respect our woman in every single way dr niles good day sir yes hello 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 hi Tracy. hi but as a host, i have two things first there. one Going back to the cycle, where, well, of course, you know, Tudor talking about going back to the, the whole socialized issue and dealing from the FOO, having origin, bringing that clarity. You mentioned again how to bring that kind of direction uh, when the man seems to be always wrong. Now, this is again socialized. When something went wrong with me, it was easier to tell him that you, you hurt your sister, you don't listen to your sister, you're the harder one, she's the nicer one, she's the fairer one, or you're not. And so that we have constantly have these issues of, of working negatively towards the main psyche. But yet you want your son to be the best son, you want your son to be the brightest son. I was sharing last week, Friday, that when something goes wrong, when there's an feeling that you have a guy who shoots somebody or kills somebody. When you have the news clipping, you hear the parents of family, he was a nice boy. He was a good boy. Even though he would have done a wrong, even though he would have created a uh, crime, he's still the nice boy. And so that we have to come to a place where we understand what we are dealing with. At home, he did one thing. But outside, because of the peer pressure, because of the whole educated system, how he was educated, how he was oriented. There is that disparity in terms of the behavior. And so therefore we need to address, again, from the home, looking squarely and truthfully, how do people 
relate home to schools, to pairs, to community, to nation. There are diverse operations that we do within each dynamic. But we, we're not looking at, we're not recognizing that they all come together to, to say he wants male or female. And so that is what has to be looked at. When Tracy says yes, so that when she comes out, she is afraid. And uh, she, it's, it's like this, her life is threatened. Where does that come from? And, and how do we address that? Well, that's a voice of many, of many parts, a voice of many persons. It's not just her alone. And I've met others who tell me, just to go from block to block, or just go around the corner to so, so go to store. It's as if I have been told that out there, it's ravenous. Out there, there is always one, a hundred, it's like 99 in a hundred, or 19 in a hundred. So the 90 percent of men are violent. Now, what I'm also hearing, even though I do not expect it, there is a culture again that presses my mind into believing it. Or I have so been so maybe abused, or there's so much in my history of knowing and think for people like us who keep sitting down with clients and hearing the history after history after history. It's like sometimes we call the consequences or I will see A, this is real. I want to speak to them. There is a reality about the danger. There is a reality that men out there may be assailants and their target is feeling and there is this violence. But I am not sure that men were taught that in their socialization to be violent women. I am saying here that men may have been exposed to be angry against women who were told, who, who, rather, were told, who were preferred in their environment, who were showed preferences, who were shown with biases. And so there's that maybe a narcissistic, maybe uh, whatever <laughs> attitude or the thought you want to use. But I think men have grown up in a place where it's like, hey, this is my time. There's some time in my life I want to be right, or it's sometimes I, I can't handle it this more. And that unfortunate feeling, whether it's spouse or friend or whatever, can be the issue of a transfer issue from their childhood. And now, and this is just a, this, this is something I am looking at. I don't say it is, eh? I, it, it's a possibility that this is true. So there are several frames that we can, we can work with. One, the issue of the socialization naturally, which is the foundation of all. In that, we see the issue of how boys or young men were establishing the biases against females, the preferences of the women, and of course, the kind of discipline that came to the young man as against to the young woman. We also refer to the education system again, the preferences of the female uh, in terms of how they were rewarded. And so we have those issues to look at. So what we do need to look at the issue of transference and consequences as a psychological dysfunction uh, that creates this kind of what we want to call it animal. So therefore, coming back to the theme again, where is the toxicity? Is it with is it the, the human man or within the, the socialization, within the system in which they were brought up? Thank you very much for that, Dr. Niles. Before we continue, I want to be able to, to recognize two comments from our studio audience. One came from Ms. Kathy Austin Jack, Mrs. Kathy Austin Jack. Thank you for addressing this topic. Our nation needs healing. Our men must be taught to value women and human life. We have a long way to go, but this is a start. Thank you very much, Kathy. As well as Ms. Victoria Frederick, who states, I agree, Kathy, it is just a start, but it's a step in the right direction. Men need to have some level of accountability. Dr. Rogers, in preparing the notes for 2020, which is applicable now to 2021, one of the questions I was going to ask the panel, and I'm going to ask it now is, 
women fighting back. I'm just going to drop that like a bomb over Hiroshima. Women fighting back. Take it and run with it, Doc. Um, so I, I want to address women fighting back. Um, and I, I will share my, th my thoughts around that. Um, I also want to address, um, I want to agree with, with what has been said as well. And I want to address um, two things that Sully brought up. And, and Kenneth, I, I must say that your volume was very low, but I got the sense that you were talking about some of the, the sociological and psychological roots um, where, where we learn cultural messaging and, and, and gender messaging. So women fighting back. Let me start off by saying the assumption there is that women were never fighting back. Women have always been fighting back, always, yeah? Boa woman has always been in our cultural space. So this idea that women fighting back is something new, it isn't. And women have fought back in many, many different ways. Um, and women have also been complicit in, in, in supporting um, gender stereotypes and patriarchal perspectives. So I said this at the last time. Yes, we're men and women, but let us also understand um, that we are raised in a certain space and not because I'm a, a, a woman, I, I have this, 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 I think this way, I believe this way, I act this way. We have many things that contribute to our, our understandings of gender, which is the roles, responsibilities, norms, all of this stuff that we um, append to being female, yeah, or, or male. Um, that's, that's, that's what we're referring to as gender, and, and it exists on that kind of continuum. So um, I want to say that women have always been fighting back. Women will always fight back. When I hear women fighting back, I think about what are the ways in which women can fight back? So are we referring to the fact that we're involved in advocacy work, that we're organizing, that we are taking care of ourselves? Because while we wait, and we, we are always doing the work of, of social change, we're always doing the work of changing values, but in the meantime, women are vulnerable and women have to take care of themselves. So we can do that through conversation, through activism, through advocacy. Um, women may also choose to do that by taking precautions or putting things in place to make them safe. Um, so I don't know if that's, that's what, what you're referring to. I must say that I'm not, I don't have a very strong social media presence. So I'm not sure what is going on in social media. I know so they kind of refer to some of the things going on in social media. So I, I don't know what's going on there. I do want to, to address something that Sule said, and I don't know if I heard him well, so I will stand corrected. Mm -hmm. But I thought I heard him say that we he didn't think that we had a rape culture um, in Trinidad and Tobago. And some, and I've heard, if that's what he said, I don't know if that's what he said, but I know many people have said that. And I want us to get clear on what rape culture is. Because some of us have the idea that rape culture means that we have people going out there and raping women and all men raping women, and that's what makes it a rape culture. And that's not necessary, that's that, the act of rape, yeah, of sexually violating a woman is one of, of a, a number of acts um, that a, a rape is just one act that that can that is in that is um belong that falls under the umbrella of, of of sexual assault. So when we talk about a rape culture, I want to be clear, rape culture means that any culture, when we talk about culture, we talk about ideas, customs, social beliefs, people of people in a society or space, right? Um, and it doesn't mean that every single person is engaging in that, but th there is this, 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 this umbrella that, you know, is this per per pervasive, pervasive, very prominent aspect of, of people um, operating in a space when we talk about culture. Um, and, and when we talk about rape culture, we're talking about societal attitudes we're talking about societal values that are geared towards or 
uh, about gender and sexuality. And it will include a number of things. So victim blaming. And we have victim blaming. Um, when we talk about what she was wearing, um, why she put herself in that situation. I, I think what Sole was saying was so powerful around this idea that, and it connects with what one of the viewers said about accountability, this idea um, that we have that blame and shame culture. And you know, I, and, 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 and I think I said this the last time that the blame is a discharge of negative emotion and it has an inverse relationship with accountability. So once we're blaming, we're not being, we're not holding anybody accountable. So we're talking about victim blaming, slut shaming, we're talking about sexual object, objectification of women, we're talking about pornography, we're talking about rape pornography. Like all of these things are contributing to an over, overarching set of ideas and values around women and how to treat with women's bodies. And those things are the things that mark rape culture. We're talking about denial about the, the prevalence of, of rape. We're talking about refusal to acknowledge the harm that sexual violence brings. We're talking about engaging in rape fantasy. All of those things are contributing to this rape culture. So I think Trinidad and Tobago has a rape culture. We have a rape culture. That's my perspective. It doesn't mean that every man out there is going out and engaging in that, but we have this pervasive use of victim blaming, slut shaming, um, engaging in, 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 in pornography um, amongst men. And also, and oftentimes women are also put, participating in that. So I want to be also be clear about that. The other thing I want to talk about is the emotions of this time. And I do agree that when we are in, when we experience emotion, and I know that my, my two colleagues can speak to this, emotions affect us physiologically. And oftentimes emotion hijack us. Like your brain, literally, if you want to start to work out the mechanics of what happens to the human brain when we experience emotion, we can become hijacked by emotion. Um, and, and I do agree that this is a very emotive time, but I also want us to know that emotions come from a place. Yeah. And so it's really important for us to really get curious about the emotion that we're feeling. You know, being balanced and being able to to um, feel emotion and not necessarily become hijacked and sucked in with it. But I don't want us to villainize or demonize emotions because our emotions are real. All emotions are legitimate. And that includes all emotions are legitimate. The experience of that emotion is legitimate because something is happening inside of you. And what you need to do, whether you're male or female, regardless of what the emotion is, emotion is stirring, we need to turn in what and ask ourselves, what is this about? As a man, why am I, why do I feel attacked? Why do I feel, why? As a woman, why am I feeling this? And it is, it is that curiosity that we connect to emotional intelligence. Emotional intelligence is not knowing that you're having an emotion, but being able to reckon with it. So I want us to use this opportunity of emotion to really tap in and get curious about that emotion, not to get sucked in and by it, but to really turn in and ask ourselves. The fact that we are so emotionally charged right now is not coming from the it's coming from a place, and that place is valid and is valid for all of us. And what we really need to do is get curious about that. So let's try and link all those things those rape culture, let's try and link emotions. So oftentimes when something happens, it is easy for us to feel attacked. Human beings have this uncanny ability to make things about them. Um, so if this is coming up and you are going to the place where men are victims too, you have to ask yourself what's, what's going on. Nobody's attacking you, yeah? yeah. If, is there something that you need to become reflective about? Yeah? If I, as a woman, feel the need now to go out and get pepper spray, get a ball by my, by my front door, whatever it is, yeah? That 
is speaking to something deep, something visceral. And before we start to point fingers at, the, at, at what I want to do, let's really get curious and think about why it is that we are going to that place. Um, so I, I know that's a lot of stuff and I hope it, it kind of speaks to your question, my feelings around women need to, to, um, to arm themselves. Let's not, let's not fool ourselves about the fact that women have always been fighting yeah, and they have always we have always had men fighting with women against this issue as well. Yeah, we have had men very, very much in part part of this issue. We may have difference of opinions about whether um, pepper spray, getting um, what we should go to to do that. We may have different perspectives around that, um, and I, I I don't really have a comment to say that, but I on that, but I want us to really think about that fighting energy and understand where that fighting energy is coming from and respect that space, yeah? And then speak to the things that Sule and, and Kenneth also brought up about where, you know, I think and I think one of the things all three of us, four of us agree on is that we are at symptomology level and there are, there are root, root levels here. And I want us to all take the opportunity to dive deep when we, when we confront this. Doc, you, you answered my question in more ways than one because it was a blanket statement and however you choose to answer it being um, one of the main stakeholders in the field, thank you for that. As a matter of fact, I learned a lot from it. And I want to do jive, Dr. Nels, do you have anything to, to say as regards to my blanket statement of women defending themselves, women protecting themselves, um, women fighting back, women's responses. Also, I would like you to speak to what, ne what is next as regards to families. So we know, and I have heard this as well, and I, I've given you a lot, Dr. Um, Dr. Niles, to speak to, but we have, I, I've, I've spoken to a few mothers who said, I am not going to have my daughter travel from X place to Y place. I am going to have a change of behavior when it comes to my specific, my, my child. How, uh, how should families respond? Yours, Dr. Niles. You always fight you back. Yes, yes. Well, when, it, I, 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 as you say, it's not a culture looking for, you know, it's a culture that is, they've always been predominantly fighters. Uh, I like to go right back to the, to the Bible. Uh, I show you from Eve, I mean, she was defending particular characters that may not have been the right way to handle it, but we have fought back. We have fought back. I mean, I, I say we, the good women have, and that is how they have existed. Uh, when they couldn't get the man to love them or give them the man to, to give them the right amount of money, they had means and mechanisms in which to survive, how to work it. So fight the back is not something you're looking for. And that's why I'm not sure pepper spray, et cetera, is going to work because inherently they have very good means in their head, very uh, systems, some granny and great granny how to handle the situation, it might exacerbate a bit. But my fear is that if men are going to be so uh, schooled in pepper spray, with, with, no, they might have a different counterattack that we do not want to go down. So I really think we need to look at that context again of bringing the cycle in. And as somebody mentioned, uh, those two responses you had, yes, it's a start, but where are we going with that start? And the other one is about accountability. It's wanting to make men accountability, but how do we get women to respond to that if they do not change the, uh, at the psyche towards that bad man, uh, uh, that man who doesn't seem to understand me? So we have, there's a lot of transition in there to do in that context. As we go on uh, in terms of the family, uh, how do we put the family? Let me go backwards here again. Let me go um, top, top down. With all that's happening here, and I hear people talk about the, the country's mourning, etc. 
uh, fine, but I'm not too sure why you're crying. And as Sule was saying, it's all reactionary thing maybe right now. And I, I'm not disrespecting or, or looking beyond that. The fact is that people are taken by surprise again. It's like, if I didn't expect it. But you see, when I go into each village, when I go into each home, let's say, what do we see? As I said to my people this morning, when we see all these groups placarding, placarding, placarding the people themselves who are placarding, we do not know if they are perpetrators or victims or they are having IVP types of domestic violence, but they are out there saying, hey, there's a woman there killed, there's a woman two weeks ago, so killed too. Uh, what next? It's as if we are saying that there seems to be a plan of foot. I am not saying there's no plan of foot. I'm not saying there's a plan or not a plan. I'm saying that there needs to be a sensitivity for life, male and female. How do we pull out the blue and the pink? How do we put that in a basket, a box, cover it up and say, hey, we are humans. Let's learn to interrelate. Let's learn to identify the concepts and the principles that are relevant for our own development as people for our future. One of the things I ask families in counseling, parents that is, what are your plans for your children? What plans? For them to go to school? For them to pass common entrance? For them to pass CHC? It's all about passing certain levels. It's not about developing a concept of, the, of being successful and understanding that what I am going to achieve cannot be achieved by myself. I need the neighbor, the friend, the teacher, the villager. I need people in my space. So we have grown individually. Individualistic. My plate, my cup, my bed, <laughs> my chair, you know, my, as I go to school, my desk, <laughs> my chair again, I go to work, this is my seat, my office, get out. So we have had this my thing. So anything we want now, it's mine. So I will, if I want it, don't tell me I can't get it. I've had enough of that, I can't get it. Mommy tell me I can't get it. Daddy tell me I can't get it. I tell me I can't get it. The government tell me I can't get it. The teacher tell me to wait. I've taken it for myself. So I, there's that imbalance in how we have been taught to approach for, and how to gain things. And so therefore, there needs to go back. This cycle and it's very important. How do we get down to the communities? And I was sharing with somebody, I said, I wish we could get back to the true best village context, get into those very nice built community complexes and use them with value to reorient, to bring the village back together. Yeah, there's that kind of unity. One more thing here for us. You know we used to say a village raise a child. No longer is it village. So we all concretize now. Everybody in their car, and they, put, they put up this. Everybody have air condition, and you go away. So you go out at 7 or 6 in the morning, and you come back at 6 in the night. You prepare for the next day. Do hope you get make sure your child eats your whole work and you go on again. So we are very myopic. We are not seeing the village. So there is no accountability, and that's where I would use the word. There is no accountability within any community or each other. And, and again, some people not even accountability to their own parents. Some people do things. If, yeah, uh, where your child? Is that your child? We don't know. It's only when the child will be missing some hours. They say, hey, the child come home. But the child will never have told you where they are and where they're going. And even though as once you reach, what, 18, you feel a big as the old person. As a matter of fact, these days, even as young teenagers, children, they want to say where they're going. They walk on the house, I'm gone. I, I, that's my own. It's my business. I go with friends. No clarity in terms of our position, of how we move along, how we socialize, where's the social in our own social impact. There is no dy dynamics there. So these are things that need to be addressed in terms of bringing the family to that place of symmetry, that place of cohesion, and that place of integration, where we can really define what is called family systems, and they are functional. 
in terms of bringing the balance to develop each sibling, each parent. And, and what well, parents need to see the, the, the value of their children and share with them, and share with them to see the value of their parents so that that brings that cohesion and balance. Otherwise, we have a, we really be on our own scheme and therefore pepper spray would not work. I rest. Uh, <laughs> Thank you very much, Dr. Niles. Mr. Joseph, interventions. Wow. Um, I, I, you have you you go ahead, you go ahead sir go ahead you speak a, a lot a lot a lot was said um something some things i don't think is the forum for, for for me to address in terms of differences of opinion so that um because i don't want us to lose the context of what we're discussing so let me I, <laughs> let me just address the question you asked about um, the first question about about women fighting back. Now, a couple of things I want to say. One is, um, women are not responsible for the behaviors of men. I want to repeat that. I, I, I close my eyes here because it came from it came from all inside of my spirit. Women are not responsible. When we do psychology, each and every one of us, the first basic tenant that we are taught is that no person is responsible for the behavior of others. We cannot control the behavior of another person. So that mm -hmm. dotishness that we have, where we talk about, you know, maybe the person was looking for it and what it was wearing and victim blaming, that is a nonsense premise. Yeah? The perpetrator or the persons who behave like that, those people are responsible for their own actions and their behaviors. Nobody else is responsible for that but you. A woman should be able to walk the street naked if she wants to. Um, we may question her sanity because of because of what is cultural practice and acceptable and so on. But she should be able to walk the road naked if she wants to walk the road. And not have to worry about some man jumping her and it's her fault because she's naked. That premise is madness. So if you could do that naked, don't tell me anything about the clothes that a woman is wearing. That is crazy. A woman is not responsible for the actions of men. Let's start with that. The second premise. In the question... Women fighting back. What, what do women do to fight back? Is loaded in that premise is the supposition that women have not been fighting back. And I think um, Tracy kind of mentioned it. Um, women have not been fighting back. And I, and, and I want to agree with her in that that is a very patriarchal, uh, misogynistic type of thinking. Women have been fighting from the very beginning. What questions we can ask is, how have women been fighting? How have they been fighting? Um, and then I, I would ask a question. To answer this question, is when you ask um, are women, or women fighting back, my question would be, when did women stop fighting? Because women have been fighting from the beginning. If we go as far back in, in anything at all, everybody knows who Rosa Parks is. Everybody everybody knows um, who ran the underground in the, in, in, the, in the States. So when we talk about women fighting back, my question is, when did women stop fighting? Women have been fighting from inception. So now, when we're talking about this particular issue, right? How should women fight? Maybe that is an appropriate question we could look at. How could women fight? And as contentious as it can be, I would like to perhaps offer my views on some of the things that we can look at or women should look at. One of the things I would mention is parenting. And please, this is not me blaming women for anything, but this is me looking at solutions for the way forward. Treatment. Treatment and solution orientation. That is what this is about. Parenting. These criminally minded or callous minded men, young boys, must have must have been grown or brought up or trained or lack thereof, whatever, but it must have been in an environment. 
Yes, we need to have a conversation about missing fathers and men's responsibilities and so on in that. But in a very real world situation right now, a lot of mothers, you have a lot of single parent mothers in Trinidad and a, a lot, it falls on the shoulders of a lot of mothers to raise their boys. Mothers, we need to take better responsibility and I understand that it is hard. And I don't expect all mothers to be able to control all of their boys. But you have to be able to recognize when you have lost control and therefore seek assistance to take control of your boy child. That is your responsibility. At least you can do that. You can recognize that this is getting out of hand. You can recognize that this child is behaving, has symptoms or behaviors that will soon create a monster and you need to intervene. Perhaps talk to a psychologist, talk to a specialist, take the child to see the police, enter him into a program. Something should be done. It should not be okay. When I tell a story all the time. When I was in primary school, my mother cut my backside for breaking home a sharpener. And at that time, a sharpener could have been about 25 cents if so much money. But she cut my backside for bringing home a sharpener because her point was she did not provide that sharpener. And I should not bring home anything that she did not purchase or, or I did not purchase. As far as she was concerned, that was theft. Me bringing home a sharpener that I found after school. And she always used to say, a thief is a liar and a liar is a murderer. And she don't want no murderer in her house. So from the time I brought home a sharpener that was not mine, it's cut tail. And so parenting, we, we need to look at parenting. Ladies, that is my first suggestion. You don't have to do it on your own. And if it gets difficult and it's something that you can't handle, reach out to somebody, anybody. Yeah, there are a lot of resources and a lot of programs and so on that are available. Second thing I want to suggest, work on yourself. And I know that persons will say, well, how is working on yourself have anything to do with uh, men and men behaviors and so on? And I'll get to why. There are some inherent biases that women and all have that are part of the culture and the society. And when I say biases, they are brought into the patriarchal structure and systems. And it's not your fault. You were, you were brought up in it. And so even in your parenting style and your functioning and how you treat with your boys, you then teach your boys some of these same structures and patriarchal um, behaviors and misogynistic behaviors and so on. So when you tell your boy, child, no, you don't cook. Let your sister go and do that. You are contributing to that type of mentality. When you tell your boy, child, no, you go and kill the cockroach, even though you're afraid, stuff your, stuff your feelings and you go and deal with that. Some of those things and those behaviors inadvertently mm -hmm. contribute to the, the maintenance and, of, of, of this culture system that we have. So you need to work on yourself. You need to go and probably see someone as, as other persons were saying, maybe, maybe do a psychological assessment and see where your inher inherent biases might be and how the system and structure has affected you so that we can break that cycle and that chain. Even, when men, even though men may be considered in society to be the head of the household, while the man might be the head, the woman is the neck. The head can't move without a neck. And so women are, are critical pillars of the society. Women build communities and societies. Men might develop them, but women build in them. They build the future. So you need to basically work on yourself and, so, and get that hooked up. The third thing, again, a little bit more personal here, and again, controversial. Women need to not settle. And a whole women is particularly accountable for this. Some time ago, I wrote an article called Baby Boyfriends. It was not necessarily well received. But my concept of this baby boyfriend is that women find men to build. And I understand that there's a small pool of educated, available men and so on. And yes, I get, I get that. But what happens is that then women, a lot of women, then settle for the best of a bad bunch. And so they pick up a bad, a, a bad fruit, but it only spoils on one side. So they might say, well, this fruit ain't good on this small piece, but the rest of it good, and I'll take that. And I'll work on fixing it. You are not Mr. Fix-It. Please, leave toxic relationships alone. Leave toxic men alone. Do not settle. It's better to stay single. There, there's no... 
there's no law against singleness. It's not illegal and it's not a crime. It's better you mm -hmm. stay single than you settle. Now, the fourth thing, um, somebody touched on it in the comments, and I want to touch on it too, by talking about women having the responsibility to hold in, holding the men that they are with or their sons accountable. And you may ask, how do I hold a man accountable? You just told me that I am not responsible for a man's actions. Now you want me to hold him accountable. And I'm saying, yes, you are holding a man accountable by placing value on yourself. The stock market, diamonds and jewelry and all of those things, they are valuable because people place high value on them. And when people place high value on a diamond, nobody is going to throw it away, fling it out a window or, or mistreat it because it has value. It has high and significant value. So I'm saying to you women, hold men accountable by placing a high value on yourself. You, you, it takes a woman to continue perpetuating society. Women, women are bearers. They breed life. Men can't do that. Men don't breed life. Women do that. Women are a necessary part of the society. You are diamonds. Nobody is going to take a diamond and fling it away and throw it. So you hold men accountable by holding a, keeping yourself at high value. And so at high value, there are some things that you're just not tolerating. So by the time a man is disrespectful and does not value you at the level at which you, you think you ought to be valued, time to bounce. And you will recognize that when men, feed, when men realize they can't get away with that, that we have to check ourselves. So I'm saying to women, some of these things are things that probably they need to do. Now, I am not saying that women are contributing to um, men doing that because I, I have st I started my conversation by stating very clearly that persons are not responsible for other people's actions. But we're talking about solutions here and we're talking about moving forward. And I'm saying, not all women, but a lot of women I'm saying out, out there need to probably put themselves at a higher value. A higher value. And at a higher value, you can't tolerate certain things. At a higher value, diamonds, platinum, gold, oil, those things, they don't get thrown around. Those things are things that are precious that you have to hold there. You get a diamond, you're going to shine it every day. You're going to keep it, you know, you're treasuring it because it is something of high value. And so women need to keep themselves at a standard of, and don't drop your value for nobody. Don't drop it for any man. If a man can't meet your value, as again, as I have said, singleness ain't no crime. It's better you stay I, single. <laughs> I hear that. I hear that loud and clear. Um, there's one quest, one further question because again we are in extra time. Some of the other it, it seems that when it, this this four comes together, we have played more than ninety minutes of football, boy. We we going into extra time. Some some classic moments I would like to call it. <laughs> but there's one thing that I I, I want to ask because. In our reactive society that is Trinidad and Tobago, and with the passion that I saw from Dr. Rogers earlier, with the description of family by Dr. Niles, as you all know, there's something called intervention. Intervention of shelters, police, courts, health service providers, religious communities, friends and co-workers but let's speak to i would consider one of the major stakeholders being the government of the republic of trinidad and tobago and as one question was posed to me via whatsapp and i would like to take the time to read it if i may i would pose this same question to the panel as one of the last questions what do you think of the response of the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, our security forces and corporate TNT, as they are key stakeholders when it comes to domestic violence against women and more so as our topic is gender-based violence. Dr. Rogers. Um, so as we all, as we all spoke, I think it's important to understand 
that we function like all animals in an ecological system. Yeah. And that in a very real sense, we are interrelated. And so we're all stakeholders in, in, in our development. We're all contributing to this environment. If we look at the person in environment, we know that a person functioning in an environment is influenced by multiple systems. So, you know, I think we're all grounded in this idea that women are not responsible for men's behaviors. We all, we all agree with that. Um, but I think we also need to be cautious um, when we think about who needs to fix this problem, who needs to set this right. The fact of the matter is that we all need to set this right. And there is a place for all the stakeholders involved to set this right. So even if we think about a mother and a boy child, that a mother can have the strongest boundaries, the best of discipline. The fact of the matter is that even if a mother is a single parent, she's not raising a boy alone. Yeah, he is part of a larger ecological system. And that larger ecological system contains messaging from the media, contain, contains um, government policy, contains policing, contains male and female role models, contains peers who may be engaging in victim blaming, rape fantasy, um, um, pornography all of those things, right? Uh, and, and when I speak about pornography, I'm, I'm speaking about um, rape-oriented pornography and all of those things that will be contributing to how women are valued. So the strongest woman out there, um, and I'm very wary of that term, strong woman. Like one of the most viscerally offensive things to me is when people say you're a strong black woman. You know, we should all be, we should all strive or aspire to be in powerful individuals. Yeah, women should value themselves. Men need to also value themselves. And, and so I'm answering your question and I'll speak because you asked specifically about government, corporate citizens and how they're contributing towards this. And I, I want us to know there is no band-aid to fix this issue. And anytime we find ourselves blaming any particular body, we need to stop. Yeah, it is not a woman's responsibility, a woman to raise her son's right. Meaning it's not her, what I mean is not her responsibility. It's her responsibility to raise her child to the best of her ability, males and females. But she alone is not responsible for how this boy mushrooms and develops. And we may have different experiences. So I, I, as a mental health professional, I have sat with people who have gotten a good licking, a good cut skin, and it set them right. But I also know for a fact that there are people and, and more, more people who get that good cut skin. And what it teaches them is use aggression to control self and control others. It teaches them resentment, and nobody's okay from coming, coming out of that. It contributes in all sorts of ways. I'm saying all that to say that one boy may have all of those things we think that he should have, and it may still go a certain place. And he, he goes that place, and she goes that place, not solely because of what's going on in her microsystem, but what's going on in her mesosystem, in his exosystem, in his macrosystem. And by those things, I'm talking about all of the entities, the communities, the individuals, the social policies that are contributing to the eco ecological world, the system you know, that we're growing up in. Think about a forest and how everything is dependent on the other. And when you remove something from that environment, something else suffers. That's the same thing that's happening with human beings. So the direct answer to the question about um, what, what do I think or what are my feelings about is government, is, are there sufficient social policies? 
are all the corporate all, all corporate citizens um contributing or doing well there is room for everyone to do better but there is no one agency no one body that is going to address this problem this problem is a holistic problem and i want us to be very wary of blaming of blaming anyone entity um for how for for, for gender-based violence for interpartner violence yeah and we all must do what we can to affect change so i'll, I'll stop there for now I like I like the fact that you say for now, Doc, because always I mean, for always for now. <laughs> always for now. Um, Mrs. Mr. Joseph, I know that um, I, I mentioned government, and I want to take the moment to congratulate you on your position at the Children's Authority. Congratulations on that. We, we take more time to recognize um, development and growth, and um, we, we 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 pray God's richest blessings in your new position as you continue your 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 personal and private capacity to develop the landscape of Trinidad and Tobago through psychology. So your answer to this this topic, this question, sir. Thank you. Thank as, you as we wrap up. The, thank you very much for the recognition. Um I uh, it it is it's an opportunity to serve and I think we all who are here um recognize that service to country and to people and to children essential and so i think that's why we're here in the first place even if we disagree on on, on little bits that might differ i think the end goal is very similar what we desire is similar and um so let me let me say um to be clear tracy just a little bit i am i am not blaming anybody at all and so when when, when i was asked for for solutions in terms of of women moving forward I offered what my I thoughts were in terms of solutions. Um, it may not be hundred percent correct. I this was this is my personal opinion on on solutions for women moving forward. Men have a whole different thing that they that we need to address for men, um, and that's a conversation I think that we need to have separate and apart because, as, as I've been saying from inception, the issue is that this is a male issue. It's the issue about men. We've made it about women when we're talking about say for women and so on and so on. It's a man issue. It's an issue with men. It's a, it's a issue, a failing where we have failed our boys and our men. This the system has failed them. And as you rightly said, and I agree, it is a holistic failing. It's, a, it's because it's many systems. We don't we don't live in isolation. So it is many systems. The thing is, we have to be careful though that we don't um, turn this into a scholastic discourse with no solutions at least for me that's 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 my my thing is it, it must have some solutions we may guess or at least suggest solutions we may not get everyone correct they may some be wrong they may some not rub people the right way it may not be a one size fits all but we have to be very careful that it's not just an exercise in being verbose and scholastic expression and that it is not something that it is really applicable and and, and can make real change on the ground because i think what needs we need to differ from um social media keyboard warriors and so on um they have their space but i think people venting and we we as as professionals i would like to think that we are not just venting but we are actively providing um solution mm -hmm. to the issues or at least suggesting p potential solutions to the issues that being said I am not a politician. I am not. I, I am a psychologist. And so I don't want to speak specifically to those systems. What I will say is this. I agree with Tracy. These systems don't exist. It's not one. It's not police alone. It's not the government alone. Um, and, and for us to blame the government, what law can a government pass to ensure that men respect women? There are countries that cut off the hands of people who steal. People still steal in those countries, right? There, there are countries where uh, uh, um, capital punishment is still is still law. By the way, it's still law in Trinidad as well, but it's it's it, it is actively practiced in some countries. There's still crime and criminality. So 
there is no there's no law a government could pass that will force people to accept values and so i agree with your your um the, one of not the caller but the person who messaged in and talked about accountability all of these systems must work in tandem and we must continue to reinforce accountability for our men accountability and it is a man issue not a female issue as i've been saying over and over so that is what we need to address i have i have um offered some suggestions on my and um, you know through my own personal views as as to what i think um women could do as well but this is a this particular issue is a male issue and it's an issue that men need to sit and have a conversation about what what has traumatized us what has hurt us what in society continues to um keep us behaving in the manner that we do what is doing that? And we need to sit between us and have that conversation. We can't wait for women to have that conversation with us. It's not women's responsibility. We can't wait for the government to, to tell us men to start having that conversation. That's not how that should work. We can't wait for police to start beating the men and saying, hey, you start to have this conversation and you put you in jail. That's not how it works. So as men as a society, we have to come together. And forums like this is what is essential, where we can have educated conversations, debates, maybe differences in opinion and so on, to have the conversation about where to start to address this, as well as having a female-minded opinion, because the truth is, no matter how much we talk about this, how much we try to empathize and understand, we cannot live the experience that a woman would live living in her skin. We can't, we, can't, we just can't. And so this type of conversation where we have an, the understanding from a female perspective and men coming together to have the conversation, these type of things, this is, this is the start. We need to have more, more of this at national level. I want to say thank you very much for that, Mr. Joseph. Um, Mr. Niles, your response to my question as regards to intervention from all agencies as your closing remarks, sir. I'm glad you said all agencies to me when I realized to my colleagues you said government. So I, 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 I can hide there. <laughs> but I cannot hide. It is imperative. I, I am reflecting on the impasse even in Tobago now and to the voices that I've heard from Parliament over the last couple of months with this issue of spread all kinds of things about the world and they're hurting and all that. And yet within those same environments, there's so much agony and bitter, verbal, you know, ca ca catastrophic words and innuendos going woman to man, man to woman. I mean, at the political level, there's, you know, how do we begin to find solutions when our very leaders are part of this rhetoric, are part of this issue. And so therefore, when we're talking about crafting a, a policy, who is doing the research? Who is putting the legislation together? Who? Who is going to do that? Uh, it's the people who are hurting, the people who are in, in the system, and they themselves are reacting. So that we are not going to really find the appeal of aim. You're not going to find an unbiased uh, particular I mean, research paper or because there's that kind of I, I, I work with students who do paper dance. I have to keep reminding them, excuse me, this is, I mean, even though we may do some technology and you're supposed to give a reflection, it is not for you to become the participant and become the answer. No, you are researching because there is inherent in us that at that, 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 what should I say, that hormone of reaction <laughs> or that gland of that, or that neurotransmitter that continues to harass or have a and say, hey, 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 I'm here, let's fight it. No, we have to stop wanting to fight it. We have to stop and say, hey, let's dialogue. I want to hear you. I want to know what you're saying. Let's see how we can share information. So no government is going to be able to give us that kind of direction in terms of a policy to calm or to quench or to annihilate this whole issue of domestic violence. And, but what we can say is that when you say parties or, or different 
all the NGOs and the FPUs and all these people who have a voice, we need to sit down and say in our own little space, how can I bring change from within? It has to start with me. Because if I am angry and I want to make change, when I go there, I will display anger. So that when I go there to tell the young man how to behave or the young woman, I am going to be angry myself. So anger is breathing anger. We, we have to be careful how we address individually our perspectives and how we come, come to place where we are not being an, so angry that we are judgmental and we are continuing to establish a sentence and decide, hey, castrate them, hey, put them in, you know, in jail, hey, no, no, hold on. We have to see that we all, at, at every level, have a means for transformation. Our thoughts, our emotions, let's get to that ever. Now, some of us may have a big, big uh, part to play in terms of what we represent. And I think I want to take a cry here uh, for researchers, for the uh, master students, PhD students, uh, professionals. Let's get down to some good research and bring some facts to the table about what is out there and how can we bring an intervention that brings functionality, establishes who we are and how we are to develop an equal space. Every creed and race hmm, is still fighting for that equal space. And yet, at the end of it, we say, and may God bless our nation. He needs to bless as in terms of inferring that grace and that strength. He needs to bless to, to impact with it. I, I, I think there's so much mess down there. There's so much agony. And we have to get rid of that first with our own selves before he can begin to bless. So I, 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 I'm encouraging people to have introspection, to own up, to own up to your own. Men, own up. Women, own up. I know when, I first, when we first heard the news, I was hearing, hey, I wonder, these men, I say, hold on, hold on. So the person, hold on. We don't know where the, <laughs> what has really happened. We have no facts. It is quick to say they're men, but who knows what the lady may have done. Who knows? We, we have no idea. The issue is there has been a death. The issue is there is pain. There's trauma. There is crisis in our nation. So we need to breathe. We need to find the effectiveness. We need to come together. We need to have an interpersonal interpersonal context. We need to see where the issue of our mind, how do we cognitively think, how, how are we bringing these thoughts together. And we need to look at the issue of spirituality, which is a belief system around the world that causes us and crafts our minds in terms of how we will approach and how we will intervene. And so these factors are very, very important to bring to the, to the fore the kind of system that we need to go forward. If everybody stay in their corner and start their own foot and say, this is how I think, we are not going to do it. We are going to have more war. We are going to have somebody being kidnapped next month. And what everybody is finding is space. Even now, look at this. Let me just say this before I go. The, 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 the direction has shifted a little bit for people with, with the max, uh, private taxis versus uh, PH. <laughs> that has been an ongoing thing since I was... I, mean, I was even married yet. That was way back in the 70s uh, when we were still saying, I can remember I was told not to drive on PH. Since in the early 70s, there has been that kind of argument and those conversations going on. That they're still here 40 something years later. Why? Because we can't think that we're not addressing the issue. We're not addressing the issue of development and education and, and job placement and business access. We're not pressing those fundamental things. We're just looking at the fact that a man needs a food, he needs money, he has to get it. And this is a way to get it. Now, because of these debts, here we are reacting. And as soon as said, it's going to spill off after a while, and next couple of years, it's going to come back when somebody else has a tragedy. We need to sit down again and not blame PHO or blame taxi drivers. We have to see what is the current heart of our people and how do we transition? How do we build systems that will really establish the way forward? So I'm, saying, I'm making a cry out there. Please, don't blame anybody. Don't blame the government. Don't blame the neighbor. Let's stop blaming and let's have some cohesion. 
I mean, we already have opposition everywhere. Opposition in the Opposition in the opposition in homes, opposition in the workplace. Let's see if we can use the opposition positively. Because as I was preaching for it, when we are opposed, that is to bring us into a, a, a frame of thought where we can see the truth and where we can see the way power in terms of solution. So that is what we ought to bring us in a place of solution rather a place of condemnation and judgment. And so I think there's hope for us as we continue to redefine our perspective, to redefine our consciousness, to bring the dialogues and the conversations that are necessary as we sit with patience and tolerance to hear each other's voice. And, and by the way, it's not one person giving us an intervention. It's us crafting as we peaceably understand every creed and race has an equal place. And may God bless our nation. Amazing to say the least. After two episodes, I humbly take the time to, with these great minds that I have before me, to conclude by saying, let's transition, Dr. Niles, as Dr. Niles says, let's deal with the, the trauma, as Dr. Rogers said, as well as Mr. Joseph said, but also the power of the collective said by Dr. Rogers in the beginning, part one. With that, I think, I hope that we can really be a nation that God can bless us, can really be a people that God can bless us, because that is all, that's who we are. As our Tagline for 2021 says, I'm going to put it up on the screen. One nation, one people. Well, one foot salad, 60 there for branding purposes, but more so stronger together. We really hope that we can be that. One nation, one people. That we can work together to be able to solve our problems. Not only this one. This one is a, this one is this one is a lot, but all of our problems. And Dr. Rogers, as one of the three men here, I hope that you, you the pain that you you, ex, you, you, you ex, I felt at the beginning of your your your, your statements. I ask that you again forgive us as men. I, I, I made this up. Okay. This is, one. this is our pain. Fair enough. I might feel the vulnerability because I live in this woman's frame, but this is our pain. And the second thing I want to say is nobody in this room has to ask my forgiveness for anything. Because <laughs> we are here. We are having the tough conversation. We are thinking about solutions. So I want us to be careful that we also don't approach this in a way that can feel, you know, I, I, I want us to approach women and men as full human beings with all rights. So there is no one who we mustn't feel, I, I want to encourage us not to feel apologetic to all women. I want us to feel accountable. Let's go in and have those conversations with the fellas in the WhatsApp group. Yeah. Let's have those conversations. Let's understand that law is important, but law doesn't work without policy, doesn't work without enforcement. Let's understand that. So there's advocacy to be done there, yeah? Something is only academic if it is not ruled down into practice. So if we're doing research, if we're having conversations, how are you taking this stuff and making it something tangible? So I want us to, and I'm not saying this is what you're doing, Godfrey, but sometimes we unintentionally get to the place where we infantilize women. Yeah, there is nothing, it, it goes back to that notion of, this is our pain, yeah? Because Andrea is us, she's not just a woman, she's a citizen, she is somebody who has been violated, she's one of all of us. So I want us to be careful about that. So that's the only reason why I'm stopping you, because I want us to all know, each one of us, 
have a, 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 a part to play in having a discussion about gender, about violence, about how it's related to norms and values. Um, you know, so let's said like four or five times in this last hour and a half that this is a men's issue. Yeah, and I want to say it's a men's issue, it's a woman's issue, but yeah, the conversations to be had between men, there are conversations to be had among men and there are conversations to be had among women in between. So all of us in here fighting, all of us in here, Let's never get, so that's why if you are feeling attacked as a man, you need to ask yourself, what's going on with me? I can't be attacked as a man. Yeah, because this is a woman who lives in my space. Yeah, I have sisters, I have lovers. It can't be, mm -mm, this is not happening. Mm -mm. So call, your, call yourself out when you're having those moments. Woman, if you feel like one man bad, call yourself out too. Yeah, because this is an opportunity for us to become united. Yeah, because this is our problem. All right, I think I'm done. For now. My closing statement will cover what you were saying, which is, as men, we need to ask ourselves, what are our traumas and what are our biases? because we have been institutionally biased. And it's not even, so even when we think we're doing good, you know, even when we think that we are coming from a good space, that is being informed by us, a society that has trained us in patriarchy, in, in Amazon, in male dominance, in subjugation of, of women and so on. And we have to understand that we're coming with biases. So we have to ask ourselves as men, what are our biases? What are our traumas? How are, so when we talk about save a woman, you're sending the same people who traumatize, who have the biases to be the solution. For, you know what I mean? So what we really need to do is we need to talk among ourselves. We need to look at what, what are our traumas be, be, between ourselves? What's going on? Where are our biases? How are they? And that's why I'm saying conversations like these are important. Because if men alone do it, we may be blinded by our biases to each other and we'll just be having a conversation back and forth where a woman may provide a perspective that we may be unaware of in our own biases, inherent. So we need to ask that question. If one thing I want people men to leave with from here, today ask yourself, what is your trauma and what are your inherent biases given by the, the current cultural structure you live in? That's it. I really I, thank you very much, Dr. Rogers and Mr. Joseph. Thank you very much, Dr. Naz, for really being a part of this um sad that we have to come back together in this regard but nevertheless the conversation continues very important to note very important to know that this is not just a talk shop for us at futsal 868 as i would have started the conversation i just want to throw it up there again we have partnered with the Trinity Tobago coalition against domestic violence um with one of our through sport we will be continuing to work to get the word out as regards to this topic, this issue. And we want to say thank you very much for, for supporting us, for really taking time to support us, for being as organic, open, frank as possible. And rest assured that we really hope that we can have this conversation again during the course of the year, because I think that we need to constantly shake that bucket <laughs> speak more, speak to as best as we can. So again, Dr. Niles, Mr. Joseph, Dr. Rogers, thank you and have a blessed week ahead of you. May God which is blessed you all and be safe, be safe, be safe. Before we go, so I just want to say thank you again, guys. Um, do have a good evening and we'll talk very soon. Have a good one. Okay. Okay, bye-bye. Thank you for Bye, guys. Me. Yeah, thanks for having us. So before we go, it's very important for us to, to, to mention a, cup, a couple of the comments, to read a couple of them, starting with Miss Melissa Valdez. But she said, agreed, this is indeed a man's issue. I also agree, though, that the response must be a holistic one. Ms. Victoria Frederick, who said valid points, women are often offended when asked to make adjustments to safeguard themselves. And whilst this might not be fair, it might be a requirement given the reactive state of this society. 
Miss Colleen Gaskittens, who has two comments, she says, I agree, women need to shoulder some of the responsibility. Yes, they are single parent families, but women, you know your sons and you know what direction they are heading down. Stop cuddling men. She also mentioned, hold them accountable when they're doing wrong. Stop saying he's a good child when you know he has X amount of charges. He is a start of breathing criminal. It is a start, sorry, of breathing criminals when you can be the change. To all our contributors, we want to say thank you very much. I'm going to say continue to support us as we continue with Futsal ACC Corner Talks. I'm going to say blessings and blessings and blessings to each and every one of you in the week ahead. Do have a great one. And see you all next week at 4 p.m. where we continue with Futsal 868 Corner Talks, part three of this topic, toxic masculinity and gender-based violence. Do have a good evening.